Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show where we analyze historical artifacts like vintage menus, recipe books, photographs, and text to tell the story of American Chinese food. From the last episode, we learned a bit more about the Chinese who went to the United States in the late 1800s to mine, to build railroads, to go into domestic surface, laundry businesses, farming and more, with the promise to make a better living. I read about the long boat rides everybody had to take to get to San Francisco and it piqued my interest. What Chinese ate in those weeks, sometimes months, on the steamer? Today we're going to try to find out. Li Chiu migrated from Guangdong to San Francisco in 1880 when he was 16 years old. After operating laundries for railroad construction gangs, he eventually moved to New York where he ran an importing business. His reflections on his life was published in the New York-based independent magazine in 1903, titled A Chinese Immigrant's Life, 1902. I worked on my father's farm till I was about 16 years of age, when a man of our tribe came back from America and took ground as large as four city blocks and made a paradise of it. The wealth of this man filled my mind with the idea that I, too, would like to go to the country of the wizards and gain some of the wealth. My father gave me $100 and I went to Hong Kong with five other boys from our place and we got steerage passage on a steamer, paying $50 each. Everything was new to me. All my life I had been used to sleeping on a board bed with a wooden pillow, and I found the steamer's bunk very uncomfortable because it was so soft. The food was different from that which I had been used to, and I did not like it at all. I was afraid of the stews for the thought of what they might be made of by the wicked wizards of the ship made me ill. When I got to San Francisco, which was before the passage of the Exclusion Act, I was half starved because I was afraid to eat the provisions of the barbarians. But a few days living in a Chinese quarter made me happy again. A man got me work as a house servant in an American family and my start was the same as that of almost all the Chinese in this country. Well, we didn't learn much about what Chinese ate on the boat ride other than that Li Chiu was afraid of the food and he really didn't like them. <laughs> Luckily, we learned a bit more from another young man who got to San Francisco in the same year in 1880, Si Tu Mei Tang, who was 13. I learned from the old overseas Chinese. Chinese started going to the United States in 1848. Back then, they took the brigantine. It could take three months to half a year. How fast it takes depends on the weather. On the ship, overseas Chinese took their own shrimp sauce for food. It became rotten as days went by. By the time they arrived, their beards were a few inches long, their eye sockets sunken, and their faces blackened. The waves in the ocean were as big as mountains. Many could not bear it, hugged the mast, and cried all the way from Hong Kong to San Francisco. By the time they arrived safely, it felt like a different lifetime. Now we have something. Chinese took their own shrimp sauce for food. But what is shrimp sauce? Shrimp sauce is a fermented condiment commonly used in Southeast Asian and Southern Chinese cuisine. After being caught, small shrimp or krill are unloaded, rinsed and drained before being dried. After fermenting for a few days, they are grounded with a stone mill, then dried under the sun either on a bamboo sifter or plastic mats on the ground. The shrimp salt mixture is mixed and flipped over a few times a day until water fully evaporates and it turns into this dark purple pink. After drying under the sun for another month, which gives it a potent aroma, the sauce becomes a smooth and silky texture and it's ready to be served. The sauce, or ha zheng in Cantonese, is kept in a jar ready to be used like marmalade, whereas shrimp paste, ha go, a more solid version, is cut into bricks. Shrimp sauce or shrimp paste is an essential ingredient in many curries, sauces, or sambal. 
It can be found in many meals in Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. It is often an ingredient in dip for fish or vegetables. For Cantonese cuisine, we like to add shrimp sauce in stir fry or steamed dishes with pork or vegetables. Since the smell and flavor are very strong, a pearl-sized bowl of shrimp paste is enough to season a stir fry for two people. I might or might not have smuggled shrimp paste blocks into the United States a long time ago to later find out Chinatown sells them. Shrimp paste is famous for being a great rice companion. You can eat a bowl of rice with just a spoonful of shrimp paste with nothing else. This is how I imagine the Chinese workers on the long journey to the United States were hoping to do. And we kind of already know from photos they ate rice on a boat. Cool, we now know what shrimp sauce and shrimp paste are, but it didn't help keeping the Chinese folks on the long boat rides from starving. If shrimp sauce becomes rotten, what food lasts? According to another account, it's actually an unassuming snack in Guangdong and Hong Kong, the red bean pudding cake, butzai go in Cantonese. Butzai means small bowl and go means cake. This pudding cake is made from white or brown sugar, long grain rice flour or rice milk with red beans added. With a traditional recipe, you first soak the rice for hours and use a stone mill to mill the rice into rice milk, mix with sugar, then pour the batter into porcelain bowls. Steamed until cooked through, and is served at room temperature. For the long boat rides back in the late 1800s that sometimes lasted for a few months, the red bean pudding cake is covered with a lid and they wouldn't go rotten even after a long time. Traditional as a street food, the hawker inserts two bamboo skewers into the cake to turn it out and we just eat them on the street holding the skewers. There were always a few hawkers on the street outside of my elementary school and this is one of my favorite snacks when I walked back home from school and that was over a hundred years after the first Chinese workers took Butzai Go onto their boats to San Francisco. So that's it for this episode. If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon.